Full transparency, I've got something of a complicated relationship with ThinkPads. I'm what you might call a fanboy, but about four years ago I bought an X1 Carbon, and without getting into too much detail, let's just say the experience has left a bad taste in my mouth. So I'm coming into this review pretty skeptical of Lenovo's quality control. I can't say for sure how it will hold up over time, but I will say this, the X1 Extreme makes one hell of a first impression. It builds on the legacy of the X-Series and fills a glaring gap in the ThinkPad lineup. It's aimed squarely at a particularly demanding kind of customer, one that wants desktop replacement level performance without sacrificing portability, users normally served by the larger MacBook Pro and XPS models. If you're one of these people, but haven't been swayed by Apple or Dell's offerings, Lenovo just might have the answer. Now, obviously I'm partial to the ThinkPad design. If I wasn't, I wouldn't currently be on my, I wanna say fifth one. If you're also a fan, then you'll love the look of the X1 Extreme. It's a serious machine made of matte black carbon fiber. The only adornments are a tiny gray and red X1 logo and the glossy black ThinkPad logo. And of course, the dot on the eye lights up red when the laptop is powered on. Arguably the most important part of any ThinkPad though is the keyboard, and man, the X1 Extreme's keyboard is just amazing. It's possibly the best keyboard I've ever used on a laptop. The keys have a good amount of travel, they feel wonderful under your fingers, and they have a very slight clickiness. Can it stand up to your $150 mechanical keyboard or vintage IBM Model M? Of course not. But it blows every other laptop on the market out of the water. I wrote this entire review on the X1, and frankly, I'm dreading going back to my MacBook Pro. The trackpad is a slightly different story. The textured glass feels great, and there's a satisfying clunk when you press down on it, but it was also somewhat finicky. Every once in a while I'd graze it just wrong and the cursor would jump an inch, or I'd be ever so slightly sloppy in executing a gesture and I'd wind up launching Cortana or minimizing all my windows. In general, I like the feel of this trackpad better than my MacBook, but the Windows implementation of gestures isn't as elegant, so we'll call this one a draw. Thankfully, even if you hate the trackpad, you can still use the track point, or as I prefer to call it, the nub. Over the years, it's fallen out of favor as touchpads have steadily improved. Even I shun it most of the time. But I've gotta say that using it is still a pleasure and sends waves of nostalgia coursing through me every time I touch it. Am I going to give up the trackpad life to return to a pointing stick? Absolutely not, but I'm glad it's here. You've also got options when it comes to ports. There's a veritable glut here that outclasses most of the competition. You've got two USB-C ports with Thunderbolt 3 support, two USB 3.1 ports, a headphone jack, plus full-sized HDMI and SD card slots. There's also Lenovo's proprietary charging adapter. And while you can power the X1 Extreme over USB-C in a pinch, I highly recommend you use the 135 watt adapter that comes in the box. The regular AC adapter can get the battery to 80% in just about an hour. Over USB-C, it took several minutes just to add a single percentage point, so I'd expect it to take well over two hours to charge completely. Frankly, you shouldn't wander very far from your AC adapter anyway. Lenovo's track record on battery life has been a bit hit and miss these past few years, and the X1 Extreme is definitely a miss. Lenovo claims you can get up to 15 hours out of it, but I find that impossible to believe unless you opted for the lowest spec model, turned the screen brightness all the way down, and left it sitting in a corner untouched. In our standard battery test, looping an HD video at 60% brightness until the laptop shuts down, it lasted just six hours and 16 minutes. Now, we haven't been able to run our battery test on either the XPS 15 or the 15-inch MacBook Pro yet, so we don't know just how far short the Extreme really falls. But the Dell comes with a 97 watt hour battery compared to the ThinkPad's 80. And while Apple is more conservative, promising only up to 10 hours, the company tends to be pretty accurate with its battery life estimates. Of course, part of the reason the battery here drains so quickly is because under the hood are some seriously powerful components. Our review unit has a Core i7-8850H CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti GPU with four gigs of video RAM. And all that horsepower is pushing pixels to a gorgeous 15.6 inch 4K HDR touchscreen that supports 100% of the Adobe RGB color gamut. Whew. In short, that's more laptop than most people need probably. But you know what? I appreciated all that power. 
Until recently, I'd been relying on a five-year-old MacBook Air and that 2014 X1 Carbon I mentioned earlier. So it's refreshing that changing rooms in Slack doesn't bring my computer to a crawl. Now, my normal workload isn't nearly enough to tax the X1 Extreme. Dozens of Chrome tabs, Slack, Evernote, Spotify, Todoist, Photoshop, all running simultaneously didn't cause the system to even blink. Even leaving Ableton Live open in the background didn't slow things down. I don't do a ton of 3D rendering or video editing, but I did my best to push the computer to its limits. I fired up HitFilm Express and piled a ton of 3D effects and filters onto a two-minute video of my son, and it chewed through it with ease. I also installed Ableton Live 10 and did my best to bring the DAW to its knees. I fired up a drum rack, two audio channels, and five separate instances of the notoriously CPU-intensive Wavetable Virtual Synthesizer. Then I added a minimum of three effects to each track, including some rather demanding reverb and delay plugins. The PC barely batted an eye. When all eight tracks were going simultaneously, I'd get some occasional audio hiccups, but they were few and far between. By comparison, my four-year-old X1 Carbon can't even handle a single instance of Wavetable without collapsing into a staticky, sputtering mess. Even some light gaming is perfectly doable here. The 1050 Ti isn't going to let you do any 4K gaming, and you might have to turn the detail down on some particularly demanding titles. But Assassin's Creed Odyssey ran at a perfectly playable 35 frames per second, with the graphics set to high at 1080p. That being said, I wouldn't recommend you buy this if you're looking for a laptop primarily for gaming. There are dedicated machines for that purpose, like the Razer Blade, that are much better suited. The primary competition here is the MacBook Pro 15 and Dell's XPS 15. And honestly, picking between the three is pretty easy depending on your needs. If you've already bought into the Apple ecosystem, the MacBook is the obvious choice. It has better battery life and true workstation grade graphics, but it also costs quite a bit more. The X1 Extreme, configured as we tested it, has a list price of $3,150, though frequent sales mean the actual price is closer to $2,800. A MacBook Pro 15 with matching 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage would cost an eye-watering $3,600. And it has an embarrassing lack of ports. The XPS 15, on the other hand, with nearly identical specs as the X1 Extreme, costs only $2,500. It has a slightly slower Core i7-8750H CPU and isn't nearly as rugged, but it also offers better battery life and is slightly smaller, making it easier to slip into a backpack or shoulder bag. With a starting price of over $1,800, the X1 Extreme is an indulgence, but it's one that might be worth giving into. If you're constantly pushing your PC to its limits, both figuratively and literally, then the combination of portability, power, and ruggedness here is tough to beat. And if you spend nine plus hours a day typing away on your computer, the keyboard will seem like a godsend. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still suspicious of Lenovo's quality control, but the X1 Extreme is the sort of machine that could win me back.